women are not suppressed by Islam any more than, uh, you know, Christianity uh, suppresses and oppresses women. It's, of course, a very common thing to say. Uh, and we could go, I could bore you with all of the rights that uh, Islam conveys to women uh, and that conveyed to women at the time of the uh, revelations of the Quran. Uh, rights in marriage, rights to a dower, rights to, you know, uh, uh, to refuse her husband for... Anyway, there are many, many ri rights to inheritance uh, that you know, women cannot be disinherited and this is all from the beginnings of Islam. So it's clear but it's not uh, known and uh, in the West. And uh, given the ick background of ignorance that we both uh, addressed, you know, somehow putting a scarf on your head, uh, you know, and then you type that with all the the uh, conflicting politics that we have with Iran and etc. Uh, somehow this becomes a symbol for the religion. It oppresses women, therefore it is something uh, bad. Uh, and uh, to my mind. This has been used as such a political tool to generalize about the faith, uh, to attack it and use it for convenient political purposes in the West. Uh, and basically it's a facade which has been erected in the West in that climate of ignorance because most people accept what is said negatively about uh, women's status in Islam. Having said all that, and you can do the research and you can just fill in, in the, 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 the blanks, we're not doing a you know, yeah. a lesson here. We're having a conversation. Uh, having said that, you know, gender is a major issue. The suppression of women, the secondary status of women, is a reality across the globe. Uh, for every society that has reached state level or is more advanced to that, uh, to, you know, colonial or imperial uh, levels, women have been oppressed and they have been utilized in, in ways that are what we characterize as patriarchy. So patriarchal relations you know, are part of human history. And patriarchy exists in Islam as it exists in Christianity, as it exists in, in Judaism, in, in Judaism for, for sure. So uh, it's, it's an unfair hit to basically say because Islam oppresses women, therefore it's a bad religion and therefore we need to go and liberate uh, those women in Afghanistan. So this has really been used as a rationale, as somehow justifying rationale for many of the military incursions that, that we've been involved with. You know, look at those women in Iran, the way that they're, uh, the way they put themselves, or in Afghanistan, they look like they're wearing tents, and they're all kind of jokes about, uh, uh, about uh, the way women dress, uh, but as a way to just basically categorize a whole people, a group of people as being sort of mindless and under the thumb of, of uh, dictatorial uh, males, uh, when in fact it is concealing rather than revealing a much deeper reality which has to do with the nature of the states in which these, uh, and it's only been the most extremist states that have said you must wear the hijab. Mostly, overwhelmingly, if you did the, ran the stats, women are voluntarily uh, uh, dressing in hijab, covering themselves as part of their way of uh, practicing Islam. So the only states that have ever mandated this are the extremist states. Afghanistan did it and has pulled back since, you know, its liberation. Uh, Iran has, and if you just look at current, I mean, there are all sorts of journalists going to Iran now. The hijab is symbolic more than real in Iran now. All sorts of women are not only heavily made up, but the scarf is barely on their heads any longer. Uh, and Sudan, the same thing happened. They mandated it, and then they relaxed it. As far as I can see, like, Sharia is used, the hijab is used as a way to kind of uh, it's one of the early things that you do when a uh, regime is Islamizing. It says, okay, we're in control here. The women have got to cover themselves. We're going to have Sharia, and uh, you know, men and women can't be seen in public. Uh, it's happened in, in Mali and, and places that have tried to rapidly Islamize. It's in northern Nigeria. It's the kind of moniker, you do this, you do this, you ban alcohol, you say, say women have to wear the hijab, you know, and all these other things, and that shows that we're an Islamic state. And it, it's just, uh, it, it's just, uh, it's theater, as far as I'm concerned. I, um, my mother let us choose. We, uh, I come from Cape Verdean community in Fox Point, where 98% of the Cape Verdean people were Catholic and, and, and attended um, Holy Rosary Church. As a little girl, I just refused. I, um, 
tried everything and went from Catholic to Zion Gospel Institute, Baptist, uh, Jehovah Witness, searching. I was searching until I finally found Islam and it seemed to, well it did, it didn't seem to, it answered all the questions that I had in my heart and my mind. So I um, reverted 1979, October 1979. Okay. So what are your impressions of these myths and slurs we hear in the culture about Islam, about suppression of women and those sorts of things? Could you kind of describe your feelings around that? Oh, you know, it's funny you should ask that because someone posted yesterday that um, in Saudi Arabia, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know if you saw that post, that um, the sheikhs or the learned people in Saudi Arabia had said that uh, they wanted the, to see the men come to the morning prayer more often, that the mosque was virtually empty. So they, what they did was they offered the men for your, if you married another woman that would help you and wake you up for your prayer, that they would pay her a lot of money. And, and so the wives, the present wives, began waking their husbands up and, and the mosque was filled. And I, re, I, I answered that and I said, that's a typical male statement. I didn't want to say at that time Arab, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I said because it isn't a woman's responsibility to make sure that her husband prays. It's his responsibility to pray. I said, but I, I will wake my husband up. If I wake up first, I will wake him for his prayer because I woke up first. I don't feel threatened in any way if I don't wake him up. I love him. That's why I wake him up. <laughs> and I'm blessed by God if I do that. So, um, what was your question? <laughs> what is your reaction to the, the, the stereotypes about repression of women, yeah, be yeah. it wearing a veil, be it uh, FGM issues, female mutilation issues, those sorts of things? Yeah, I, I, you know, it, um, I think initially when it strikes my heart, I become saddened because so much out there is, it's just, it's just far-fetched. I mean, it's true, uh, the mutilation of women in some cultures, that does happen, but people need to understand that isn't, that isn't an Islamic law or rule. That's a culture. And this is, this is a great deal of what, what goes on and, and what uh, confuses people is because people mix their culture with the religion. If people were to study the religion itself in its proper terms, they would see that we are not oppressed. I, we women go about our business, we work, we're teachers, mm -hmm. we're phlebotomists. We're doctors. We go on with our, li our life and our children and our, and our spouses. We're not, we're not beat into submission. It, it, these are cultural stories that they hear from other people, but you need to study the religion.